Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the HTML5 audio element that we can use directly in HTML to play back audio files. And we can do some interesting things with it. We don't have full control over the sound. Uh, we're going to need the web audio API for that, but we are going to have a look at that later on. The first thing I, I did here is uh, I, I actually open up uh, this folder that I have on my desktop. You don't have to call it the same. You don't have to have it located the same place. Uh, and I opened that up in Visual Studio Code or VS Code because I like that editor a lot. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my first file, which is going to be the index.html file. And inside my index.html, I'm just going to boilerplate some HTML5 here. We're going to call it, let's call it the uh, audio element because that's what it's about. And um, just before the closing body tag, we're going to enter a script here and we're going to add our JavaScript file. So source equals, um, that is going to be, let's call it main.js. Okay, so we don't have that file yet. So let's go ahead and create that out here. That was main.js. And inside this, I always like to just console log something so I can see that everything is hooked up and ready to go. So let's just say hello to the world or whomever universe. And then we can go ahead and we can run this file here. What I like to do is run it on my local server here and I have uh, an extension installed. It's called uh, live server. You can go ahead, you can search for it here, but I already installed it. So I can right click on my index HTML file. Then I can open with the live server and it's going to open up in the browser here. And as you can see, nothing happens, but let's open up the developer tools and we can see that nothing is going on here. So um, <laughs> console is not a function. <laughs> That's because I cons I forgot to add a log. Oh my goodness. Anyways, now it should work. So here we have hello. Okay, this is going a bit too fast for me. Too much coffee, I think. I'm speaking pretty fast as well, but sorry about that. Okay, we're going to move on now. Um, actually, what I want to start with doing here is just inside here, I'm just going to add an audio tag or an audio element. It looks like this. You have to add a source, so you need some music, you need some audio, and you can add all different kinds of uh, file types. Uh, it supports uh, MP3, or it supports anything that the browser supports, and which is MP3, and some uh, browsers support OGG, and every all the browsers support uh, the WAV files and things like that. But you can look into that online somewhere and find out what um, what their support for where. But um, what we're going to do here, I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm going to call that audio just so we have somewhere to put our audio. And I downloaded some audio from the internet that is open source and I can't remember exactly where I got it from, but you can go ahead and you can find all different kinds of music. It shouldn't be too hard to find these things. So uh, I'm just going to take this one. I'm going to put it in here. This one is called Both of Us and we're going to our index HTML. I don't have to have it open here and I'm just going to add it here. So we have to get into our audio folder and load this one, both of us. And this is an MP3. So let's see what happens if I save this and go to the browser. Well, nothing happens at all. I still get the hello. So it's hooked up to the JavaScript, but nothing happens here. But if I go ahead into the elements, uh, I can see I actually do have an audio in here, but it's invisible. I can't see anything. So in order to be able to see anything here, we want to add an attribute to this audio element. And one of the attributes we can add is controls. So that will show the controls. And now you can see we have something to look at here. We have a play button. We have the time. We have where are you in the audio file. And uh, we have the volume here. Um, and then you can do some things here. You can't really see it because it's outside of the screen. But let's just try and play. And it, it's music. I can go back and forth here. I can control. I can mute. I can control the audio here. And um, I can do some other things here. But let's just move it down to the center of the screen so we have better access to, uh, to this one. I'm going to go back and let's just create a CSS file. Call it styles.css. Inside this one, I'm going to take the body tag, the whole body of the document, and I'm going to give that a height, first of all, of 100 VH, which means viewport height. That means that it's 100% of the height of the browser window all the time. So it's we can place something in the middle, in the center of it. And to do that, I'm going to use Flexbox, and I'm going to use Display Flex, 
and to center everything in here, I can say justify content center and then I can go ahead and I can align all the items to center as well. Then we should have every, everything centered. And uh, I forgot to save or I forgot to load it here. I forgot to get it here. So we're going to link to the CSS file and that's a style sheet correct. And that is just going to be this one here. Now it should be centered and we have it right here in the center of the screen. So if I click on this button with the three dots, I can uh, I can download the file. Uh, if I do that, as you can see, I already did it once here. Uh, and um, yeah, that's one thing you can do. And then you can go ahead and you can see the playback speed. So I can set that to half or 0 0.75 or whatever. So let's just try this out. I'm gonna play it here. Whoops. And let's try to set it to uh, the playback speed to half here and you can set it to normal again and then you can speed it up if you like so that works pretty well um, so that's one way you can put like a, a sound file and audio file on your website if you just want to uh, you know let people listen to your band's latest single or whatever uh, this is not very good for you can't really do many more things than what I already showed you here but you can, however, you can control this from uh, from JavaScript. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But before we do that, as we know, we have different, uh, as I talked about before, we have different file formats. And one way to make sure that the browser can support these uh, file formats is to instead, I'm just going to take this the source here. I'm just going to cut that out. And um, in here, I'm going to add a source element. And we're gonna need to set the source here. Um, so what that means is, first of all, it's going to say, okay, we need to play some audio and we wanna show the controls. And then we have the first source is an MP3 file, but we have different file types. So we could probably take this one and let's say we have three different uh, file types here. The first one will be OGG, which is a file format that's um, very small, smaller than MP3. And, uh, but not all, all browsers support that. But the thing is, it's going to go look for this one first and then check, do I support this one? If not, I'm just going to move on to the next. And, uh, if the browser supports this one, this is the one that is going to be used. And then let's add the wave. And then uh, we should probably also add the type to it, which is, uh, I'm not sure that is necessary, but it's a good practice to do so. So this one would be, we could add the type that would be, I just have it in my, Right here so you would say audio yes it's audio and this is mpeg so here we could go ahead and say this is uh, oh it's not mpeg it's ogg and this is mpeg and this one is wave which would be v and like so another thing that we can do here is we, if we have some text or anything else within inside the audio tag uh, it will be displayed if it doesn't work if the browser doesn't support the HTML5 audio element so I can just add some not support it something like that and that will then show but uh, yeah this is how you can do that as well so uh, I don't have any of those right here in my audio I only have the mp3 but we can go ahead and we can have a look at what's going on if we go to the console it's gonna say okay we don't have the OGG it's not found but still I can play because it's moving on to the next one in line. But of course, we should be sh make sure to add all these different file formats if we're going to link to it. So that's one way we can uh, we can do that. I'm just gonna go back to what we had before, uh, just in one. I'm just gonna demo everything only with one source. And uh, because we can also, without adding controls, we can also just uh, do some other stuff. We can actually say autoplay. And when you add that attribute, it's gonna play automatically. So when I save here in one, two, three, it should play. And it did. Um, actually, sometimes it's not going to play just like that because in Chrome and especially Chromium browsers, you will have something called, I can't remember what it's called, but you have to make a user interaction on the document before it will allow you to play any sound. But uh, I think because I'm on a local server here, it's letting me do that without any 
problems at all. But that is something that we will look into later as well. So if we go back to our index HTML, there's another thing we can do. We can also set a loop on it if we want to do that. So if we wanted to just keep playing and playing and playing, maybe you want some black background music, uh, I can say loop and that would uh, work. I'm going to save it. It's playing. Then I'm just going to fast forward to almost to the end here, 248, 244, something like that. And it starts from scratch. So that is basically what you can do with the audio uh, element here directly from your HTML. But another thing you can do, you can go ahead and you can um, actually control some of these things from the um, from your JavaScript. So maybe I just don't want to display this at all on the page here. Maybe I just want to control, make my own controls in HTML and style it up and make a player of my own. So I can just go ahead and do this. We don't have autoplay. We don't have anything. We don't have any control. So we don't see anything. The only way we can see it is if we go to the elements and see there's actually an audio file being loaded here. Um, then inside our JavaScript here, let's get rid of this hello. And here we can go ahead and we can grab the audio elements. So we can do that by like we usually would do with any other el element. So we could uh, make a constant, for example, and we could say uh, document query selector. Uh, Oh, we have to call it something. Let's call it audio and uh, query selector. And we only have one audio element on the page. So let's just go ahead and grab that one. Um, so now we have access to that. I can try and console log it just to see if we get something. And then go to the browser and see what's going on in the console. And we actually get a console log this element here. So that works. It looks like we have access to something here. Um, then I can go ahead and I can just take my audio and I can play it. Just call the play method on that. I saved it and it's playing the, the audio. Uh, again, this should this is probably not possible in all cases because they don't want to you to play audio whenever you want to. So um, you need a user interaction first. But that works. Um, then let's actually add some elements to the index HTML, like a start button or a play button and a pause button. We can do that. Let's do that after the audio element here. Let's just a button. Let's give it a class of, let's call it play. Let's pay. It would be nice to get paid. Uh, here, that's ugly, but it's okay. And then here we are going to call pause on this one. And whatever like this okay let's check yeah, we have them right here in the middle of the screen and then we can add some um, huh, this should be like this okay so in our JavaScript we can as well we can go ahead and we can get the reference to these buttons um, let's call it play button the first one and that's again document query selector to grab that one here and that only has it has play class and then we're just going to copy this line and we're going to take the pause button and that is going to be pause something like that that's what i call it right yes that's correct and then we can add a to the play button here let's add an event listener to that so and what we can listen for is a click. So when the user clicks on this button, we're going to do something. And whatever we're going to do, it's going to happen within this arrow function that we're defining right here. And what we want to do is we want to take the audio and we want to play it and run that. We cannot, it doesn't accept any arguments or anything. This one here, we don't have to console log anymore. And let's see if that works. Um, I'm just going to hit play. It works. But I can pause it because I didn't do anything here. So I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm just going to reload the page. Okay. So let's copy this here and add an event listener to the pause button instead. And you probably already guessed what we have to do here. This is a uh, pause that we need to run on this one here. So let's try it out. I'm going to play and then I'm going to pause. And when I hit play again, it starts from the same place as it paused. So that works. 
So we can do other things here. Maybe let's try and uh, change the, the playback rate. So we can do that by just taking the audio and we can say playback rate. And we can set that to like one is the original tempo or original rate. If you want to half the speed, it's 0 0.5. That makes sense. So let's try and do that. Play. And it plays. It's slower. And uh, we could we can double the speed as well by saying two, and so there are different things you can do with that. If you look into the MDN web docs, you can uh, you can find out uh, the HTML media element, which is inherited by the audio um, element, and you can see all the different things you can do here. If we go ahead and we search for the pause here so this is the media element you can pause it you can play it you can do these things but not only that you can do other things as well you can look into that yourself if you'd like to then you have events as well and it would actually be nice to find out because this this audio is loading um from somewhere and this is on my local server right now on my computer on my hard drive so it's going really it's really fast you know i don't have to wait for anything loading so you can see here you actually have some uh, events you can listen to and this one can play is uh, fired when the user agent can play the media but it estimates that not enough data has been loaded to play the media so that's probably not the one we're going to go with but uh, let's go with this one can play through because that is when the user agent can play the media and has estimated that enough data has been loaded to play it up uh, to the end without having to stop for further buffering so we can go ahead and we can add this one here before we even let the user click the button. So we are going to, let's up here, let's take the audio and add the event listener. And the event listener we're going, or the event we're going to listen to is can play through. And when we know that we can do that, we can run this, execute this function here, which uh, is actually we're just going to add the event listener after it has determined whether it can play or not, or whether it can play. So I'm just going to cut this and add it in here. So uh, that should work as well, but uh, you're probably not going to feel or see a difference here because it's, um, I don't want the playback rate to be two. I'm just going to delete that. But let's see if it still works. Where is it? It's right here. I'm going to play and it works. But this time we know we that it has been loaded, enough has been loaded in order for it to uh, to play all the way to the end. So that's another way we can do it. We can play around with it in JavaScript. So we don't actually have to, um, to load it from here. We can actually load it from JavaScript uh, and work with it in exactly the same way. So if you want to have everything in our JavaScript and we don't want this one here, let me just comment this one out. Uh, we can go ahead in our JavaScript and instead of doing this, instead of um, selecting the, the element on the, in the document, we can call new audio constructor here. And all we have to pass in is the URL of the, of the file and that would be in, uh, where was it, audio? And both of us it's called. which is an mp3. Okay, so we should be able to do the same things right now, but we don't have this thing in here. So yeah, let's check it out. And as you can see, it still works. So this is a way you can work with audio in JavaScript without using the web audio API. So this, as I said in the beginning, this doesn't really have much to do with the web audio API. It's just a very convenient way if you want to play your band's newest song on your website or something like that, and you want to let them download it, it's very easy to just use the, the audio element in your HTML. But if you want to like play multiple sounds simultaneously, if you want to crossfade between them, if you want to add some effects, you want to pan it to the left or the right, or you want to control the timing of it, then you're going to need the Web Audio API. And I did say that this has nothing to do with the Web Audio API. This is purely HTML5, but actually you can load the files this way as well and pass it into the Web Audio API and get all the capabilities that... Uh, that you have there. Uh, but there are different ways, there are many different ways of loading sounds into the Web Audio API, and this is just um, 
a way of getting audio in your browser from JavaScript and directly from HTML. But in the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how we can uh, take this and put it into the web audio API and different ways of loading the sound and playing around with it. So I hope you're going to join me in the next couple of uh, videos and check that out. Thank you for watching. See ya.